Good evening, everybody. Well, tonight we're going to start with where is gold in Nevada? A little bit of desert sands this time around. So uh, with that going, I thought I'd show a little picture of one of the Keen Engineering's uh, pair here. There's two dry washers, which are sluicing sand in the desert. That's part of what's got my brain on sluicing. So, but these dry washers are capable of handling these dry climates, arid climates. They're not very good when there's a lot of humidity, but if there is a lack of humidity when it dries out toward the summertime, they can be impressively valuable for recovering desert gold. Hey, I just wanted to point out uh, all the maps and so forth given on these shows are presented using a technique I use in my government gold maps product. You can also find all that information and more in the GDU or Gold Diggers Underground that's related to the Gold Prospectors Bonanza Club. So check out the link below. Now to give you an idea of that, I'm going to go over to the USGS MRDS. So let's flip over to our picture for the night. So where is gold in Nevada? This is where we're looking. Um, right now we have this kind of picture showing uh, the Nevada expanse, but uh, the thing that hits you first is just the sheer number of gold prospects spread across the whole state. California, if you recall, those prospects went primarily along the Sierra Nevada and up in the Trinity Alps area here. And then there was a sprinkling up and down the coastals and some stuff down in Southern California. And then the desert area was similar to Nevada. It was all sprinkled all over, but Nevada is intense. It comes about for several reasons. One is Nevada is a very prolific production area for gold and silver and other metals, but primarily gold and silver become very valuable here. So there's a tremendous amount of mining that's gone on. And historically, um, it's been one of the biggest producers of those two elements, gold and silver. So uh, for the United States. So that's just an interesting anecdote. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit here and take a look at what we've got to offer tonight. It's a little slow because there are just so many uh, data points. Now you begin to see as we zoom in, there's this picture that appears. Now I wanted to call your attention to something I talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, and that was the concept of Horst and Graben. Uh, these are these are the upthrown and downthrown blocks that are faulting across the desert, and Nevada is a perfect example of that stuff. Uh, basically, giving you this this uh, basin and range kind of appearance, where you have these basins in between. Uh, a range of mountains and so what typically you see is there'll be ribbons of gold that follow that pattern very interesting indeed when it comes to geology and matching gold up in this in the state of nevada or for that matter in any desert region um, and so as we zoom in you can begin to see this pattern emerge where where the gold is up in these hills these mountains where it's been up thrust and then it's coming down into these alluvial plains where it's downright difficult because they're thick hard to get to bedrock when you're when you're several miles deep but there are places that people have found gold you know here's one Ioni mercury point mercury plant and their their primary producer is mercury I don't know why they're on the gold list it's an interesting thing you never know sometimes this stuff just seems a little weird um, there's gold and silver sheep canyon prospect Antelope mercury deposit again mercury and then there's gold silver and copper So maybe this other one had had gold at one time somehow been associated and then historically they edited the documents that that's possible Again, these are dynamic documents. You never know what things shift around. Usually they match pretty closely This is a surface and underground. So there's load and there is placer deposits in the same area Let's zoom in on this one just for fun and see if we can spot it from the sky Well, look at that. So now you see this, what looks like workings all through this area where they've done digging and recovery. But that's that antelope mercury deposit. Now at one time, uh, mercury was much more valuable than gold. In fact, it may, may still be in some respects, but it's a little more difficult to deal with. But at one time when they were prospecting for gold, losing mercury was 
more expensive than losing the gold. Go figure. And that's why there's a lot of claims that they lost a lot of mercury, which they did. But they were really careful about not losing too much because it was quite expensive. And they had recovery processes using copper plates and some you know, some heating elements in, in a distillation tube to kind of recover all that mercury, especially when it was with the gold. But the idea is, you know, they didn't want to lose it. So they practiced conservation. It's just they used so much of it that it had to escape. Not a good thing. But uh, anyhow, that's that prospect. That's kind of interesting to see out in the middle of the desert here. Uh, now, compare that to the nearby mountains, though. It's a different story. You know, you see much more frequent occurrences up here. See if we can spot, like this one right here is Key Flower Mine. It's an epithermal vein, Comstock, load, lead, copper, silver, and gold. That's very common Comstock material. Lots of silver, lead, copper, gold, they kind of go together. Uh, so the ore was galena, iron, malachite, and tetrahedrite. Uh, we mentioned that the other night. So this is a good case for, you know, what you'll see in the difference between these, these down-thrown blocks you know, the basins and the ranges of mountains. So basin and range. And, it, and what you see is if you back off, you'll see the ranges are the dark colored stripes and they follow kind of in these linear fashion. Now what's happening here is the, the pressure from the Pacific plate is forcing these guys, let me turn this thing off. So the pressure from the Pacific plate is pushing this way and this way, compressing these these sections of, of material horizontally, which causes them to buckle upward. And so as it compresses, you think of it as a kind of a, an, an accordion pleated piece of paper going up and down. And as you press on it, the paper rises in altitude and declines in the valleys. And that's what you're getting here is this crumpling action from the forces from west to east. It causes a crumpling in a north-south trend. That north-south trend is where the gold is. So that's a food for thought from Prospector Jess. You want to keep an eye on that stuff. Um, the other thing you'll see in some of these areas are these are these uh, deposits. They're massive uh, areas that are beyond simply uh, basins. They're actually salt, uh, 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 temporary lakes. Okay, salt and seas kind of thing. Okay, they're salty uh, regions where they have dry lakes. And the dry lakes are not very useful for finding gold, although you sometimes can find it nearby, like in this case. But typically you won't find gold here, but you might find other interesting minerals. Uh, it's not uncommon to find things like lithium and so forth in these salts, along with sodium chloride, which is a, a big constituent. But you'll also find other salts that could be very valuable and interesting. So sometimes it's worthy of you know, most folks have found everything there is there. Now that one's a geothermal deposit uh, carrying gold. So there, so there's a hot springs area in this region around this salt thing. That tends to indicate deep-seated volcanic activity, uh, faulting and volcanic activity. That happens in this basin and range area a lot. You saw it up to the north in the area around uh, uh, what we discovered yesterday when we were looking at Idaho. That whole southern section is all desert. That's the northern part of Nevada. But you're going to see that kind of geothermal activity anywhere there's volcanic activity. And so here we go. Now this one is copper, lead, silver, barium, barite. So I don't know why we're pulling up all these other odd things because I asked for gold. So, you know, take everything with a grain of gold, salt, uh, that you get out of the MRDS. Again, that goes back to that thing I was talking about earlier about maintenance and you know, accuracy. You just have to check what you're looking at. Uh, that could explain why we're seeing just such a sheer large number of these things. Uh, but there, again, there's gold showing up in these. Gold, zinc, silver, lead. So primary is commodity number one, gold. And tertiary, the third level thing, is zinc, silver, lead, and copper. And there's probably crud in the stuff in between. This generally is the order in which they come out in terms of sheer uh, ratios, volumetric ratio or ma uh, mass ratios, how much you're getting out of each sample. And so you're really interested in if there's a primary commodity showing gold, that tells you there's, there's placer gold in this region. 
Uh, and then there's a lesser amount of plaster, zinc, silver, lead, and copper. Those are typically oftentimes oxidized into ores and things like that. So now let, I was going to take you up north, right up here. So we're in the border between... I mean, Idaho, Oregon. So Oregon's over here. Idaho. Oh, we still have Idaho turned on, huh? Isn't that funny? From last night. Uh, let me turn off the gold from Idaho. Well, anyhow, this is what I wanted to show you. See, there's this distinct pattern of, of gold through here. One of the things that you'll see, though, is notice there it just abruptly stops on the border. There is some political uh, influence on gold and silver and so forth, and that is whether a state encourages mining or not. And Nevada has openly encouraged mining because mining is its, has been its number one resource. Now it's gambling. But it has been uh, mining and not recreational. In fact, some of the biggest mines in the United States are right up in this region up here, the Carlisle. And so, uh, let's see if we can spot one of them. Homestead, Prospect, Gold and Silver. So I'm kind of drawing a blank here. I that's, a, that's beyond tonight's discussion. Uh, anyhow, that's Nevada for you. Um, again, Utah over here. So if you're going to find gold in Utah, it's going a lot of it's going to be, again, in this basin and range region over in this area. And then uh, there might be some stuff along these mountains through here. But we'll cover that when we cover Utah. We'll be back. Hey, let me know how you like this. I, you know, you, I, the Idaho picture we posted, uh, went through the roof. Part of what interested people uh, from yesterday is I did this double header with Idaho on one side of the country and Maryland on the other, and people started to catch on the geology differences between east and west. They're huge, and they have an impact on how you want to look for gold and where you can find it. And so that's part of why I teach stuff like that in the, in the Gold Diggers Underground and, and Gold Prospectors Bonanza Club, which is what another name for GDU is. But it's it's how to get that vision, your gold vision, your 2020 gold insight, and learn how to spot things that would tell you about gold. And you start with where the gold is located in history. That's what these pictures on these maps are about. And then you work your way toward the geology and the structures and the minerals and eventually get yourself to where you want to pick off your sample holes. And then you take your own samples and create your own map and your own history and how you found gold where you're looking. Because there are people who continue to say gold is where you find it. Well, yeah, so is dirt. The problem is you want to find gold and not dirt. So the question is, where isn't gold where you find where you don't find it? That's a tongue twister. But you really have to watch out for where you shouldn't be digging more than where to dig. And the reason is that prevents you from digging up all over the place and wasting tons of diesel or energy or whatever you're using to get your your prospecting done and that's where a good sampling with a good pan and a shovel and your own brain and vision will di will guide you through to the right spot and that's what i'm trying to get you when i go through these areas i'm going through very cursory you want to dive deep and and find out for your own local area so for example if i w had an area down down near, let's go down near Las Vegas for fun. They're going to detour. So if I go down near Las Vegas, and you can tell in Las Vegas they don't like you digging anywhere near Las Vegas, but guess what? There are a couple gold mines. There's one right here by the airport. <laughs> so, so White Rock Mine was a sand and gravel construction producer well you know clearly i picked off a little too much stuff with this setting so i probably pulled in more than gold i would guarantee it uranium you want to dig up some uranium near las vegas uh, could be leftovers <laughs> let's see uh And gravel construction, a lot of a lot of that stuff. So let's see the Johnny Mine. Okay, let's go up here and look in on the Johnny Mine. So now we've got this mine up here, and we look in closely. One of the first things you'll want to do when you look into this thing is see if I can do it. And then I go up here and pick off Sunshine View. This is kind of a fun feature, so you can shade it based on the sun levels. And that helps you identify the local terrain and features. 
And so you begin to see a pattern here where there's mountains right through here. And we're sitting kind of in a, on a backside of another mountain. And that's one way to kind of identify the characteristics of this region. Just by dialing these in using Google Earth and the gold map stuck on top of this, this Earth-based map that gives uh, what's called a relief map. Now, once you do that relief, you can easily see the canyon here, which you couldn't see before. Remember, it looked more like this. So, oops, looked more like broad daylight. Kind of not real distinct. But if you put the shadow at, you know, 5 o'clock in the evening, now all of a sudden you can make out all the interesting patterns of this and how you might set up a road or get on a road or hike up in there. Where else the gold might go down in this in this uh, wash that's down below. It's possibly because this one is a producer of gold that doesn't say, oh, it's surface mine, so it's placer. So again, you know, it's a little hard to tell what we're looking at here in terms of what might be in the area, but it does give me some ideas of where I might look because this is inclined down this canyon, so the gold would roll downhill, downstream toward this wash, and then down the, the wash. And that would be the thing that I would kind of give you for a tip for tonight. Downhill, downstream. You know, roll, gold, like other things, rolls downhill. <laughs> so, this is Prospector Jess over and out for tonight. And where is gold in Nevada? Catch you later. Good night.